You are now listening to the Highlight Real Builder for Authors, the Going North Podcast. I'm your host, certified self-leadership trainer and author of the best-selling book, Stay the Course, Dom Brightman. And you're going to be getting some goodies today from the guest that's up next. And today on the High Life Real Builder for Authors, known as the Going North Podcast, we got another author in the building, baby. That's right, my man, Mr. Eminem himself, all the way from the magical land of Canada. And for my grammar experts, you fell for that trap. In the wonderful land of Canada, we got a one heck of a guest for you today, my friends. One heck of a guest for you today. Because this wonderful lady right here is a seasoned author, folks. Multiple books, prolific writer in the romance category, y'all. In the romance category, all the way out in Jasper, Alberta, baby. And we're really going north indeed. Not only that, she also is a lovely wife, and she also loves a bunch of little critters, folks. So that's right. She loves animal spirit, animals, and her man. So let's give it up for this fabulous lady right here, Miss Lana Mackey. How you doing today, Lana? Thank you so much for having me on your show. I feel very privileged. Ah, yeah, that's right. The privilege is real. That's right. It's so real you can touch it, maybe taste it. Definitely see it. Ah, there you go. That's right. Especially with all 10 eyes. That's right. That's right. All 10 of them. (laughs) All 10 of them. I'm just counting our third eyes, too, on top of our glasses. That's why it's 10. Is there 10? One, two, three, four. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. That's right. That's right. You're probably like, what? I thought I was talking about romance novels. I didn't know I was doing math today. What's going on? <laughs> oh, and I would fail miserably at math. <laughs> Writing is good. Math so much. Not so much. Uh, and I work in a school. So my teachers in the school, if they're out there watching eventually, they'll be knowing that it's true. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm talking about. Well, the good news is this interview doesn't involve math, but it involves Miss Lana herself. So mind filling in any cavities I missed about you in the introduction. Tell us who the wonderful Miss Mackie is. Well, I live in Canada. I live in a small town called Didgeberry, Alberta, in Canada. Population 3,500. There's a small number for you. I do. I have a husband. I have a giant Alaskan Malamute who will speak to me every now and again. <laughs> he loves to howl. Um, I have two cats. I have a Bengal cat and a different farm cat. And I love to write romance. So yes, I do have 10 plus books. I write everything from contemporary, fantasy, paranormal um, to some erotica. And yeah, that's kind of me in a nutshell. Ah, uh, a nutshell indeed. So cashews or almonds? Both. Oh, okay. So I guess that <laughs> makes you really nutty, huh? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit crazy, yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, we're not going crazy. We're going to call it creative because you're a writer. So creatively crazy. <laughs> Maybe that will work. <laughs> uh, okay. Who knows? I might go through the whole alphabet today. Who knows? But it's all good, though. It's all good. So a lady who loves the wonderful animals with all the kittens and all the cats and all the doggy doggy woggies and romance. So how did you get into loving romance? Was it the first novel that you read as a teenager that got you into that? You know, it, it kind of was. Um I started, I, my friend, probably in grade seven, passed me a Harlequin romance novel, and she said, here, give it a try, because she always had her nose buried in a book, and so I said, oh, I don't think I'm going to like that, but anyway, I took it from her, and I read this little Harlequin novel romance, and I was hooked, totally. I was like, wow, I had no idea this stuff existed, and I would fly through them left, right, and center, and 
you know, read as many as I could, one a day sometimes. So I always loved reading romance, definitely. And then it was probably not, I don't know, maybe seven years after that, I discovered there was paranormal romance. And then I really knew, okay, this is, this is my element, definitely. Weird creatures and romance and mystery, definitely. So I, I knew that I was in the right place. Ah, okay. So paranormal romance. So what does that genre entail for those who have no idea what that's about? Right. So paranormal, I actually probably prefer fantasy more because fantasy is a little bit more liberating, I think, freeing, actually, because there's not a whole bunch of rules in fantasy. You make your own world. But paranormal, um, like the, the werewolves, the shifters, the vampires, the mix of normal day with the um, vampires and werewolves that live within the modern day world. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, okay, so vampire swag indeed. So has there ever been a vampire werewolf all in one guy in one of your novels yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, they definitely exist. Sort of, kind of. In my fantasy novels, there have been. There's been some really weird creatures in my fantasy novels, um, dragon shifters, um, stuff like that, with fangs. Ah, some of that fang swag. All right. That's what I'm talking about indeed. So with all this wonderful creativity, what inspired you to be this creative? Was it just from the reading or was there something else that inspired your creative imagination? I decided to write my first book in, in a province here in Canada called British Columbia. There is a place called the Enchanted Forest. And it's a wonderful place. It really is enchanted. It's kind of like a, going into an adult nursery rhyme. It, it is in a forest off the side of the highway. And there's everything in there from like, you know, no white and the seven dwarves as you walk along through the forest. Um, there's the three little pigs and little houses with the wolf that will blow the thing down. There's a castle. So that really inspired me. I really thought, oh, I wonder if I'm, I'm going to actually try to write one of these books that I really, really love to read. And then the other thing for me is that I am really a little bit, when I go to sleep, if, if I have cookies and milk, my head goes into some weird fantasy places and I create creatures in my head <laughs> that I write about. So I actually created a hippo dog burrowing owl and I actually wrote about that in my first book. Okay, so some milk and cookies, huh? All righty. Uh, some milk and cookies. That's right. Any God, favorite? Ah, uh, yeah, some that M and that C right there. Some MC swag. Any? So, what's your favorite <laughs> cookie? Fudgios. Uh, Fudgios. Fudgios and Oreo cookies. And then I also like Aero chocolate bars. I think you guys have those. Do you have those in the space? Aero <sighs> chocolate bars? If they do, it's either really hidden or they named it something else. <laughs> it's one of those two it's, things. It's milk chocolate. Milk chocolate and milk um, and a camping trip. And then the next morning, my pen will be writing furiously with all the things that I've drafted. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's what I'm talking about indeed. So my goodness, so that's that's interesting. You're, you're like the first one to admit on this podcast that milk and cookies give you inspiration and help you dream these wild dreams that go into paper. So that's, that's actually amazing. It's almost like Mrs. Santa Claus swag. <laughs> I suppose. I, I really do like the creatures that I dream about. I um, dreamt about something called a storm cat. Um, he was a giant like size of houses that jumps out of the clouds at me. Um, he's from the Sahara Desert. His name is storm cat. I've dreamt of something that I call a magra. He's like a 
cross between a, a raccoon and a cat and a, a bobble animal because his head's really big and he always falls forward. So that was Magra. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. And do you think dreaming of all these creatures led you to become a fan of animal spirit guides? Totally. Very much so. Yeah, I've always been very in tune with my my animal, my animal paths and animal spirits. And um, I do believe in them for sure. I do. And I think they speak in, in different ways to me <laughs> for sure. So, yeah, I, I do believe in, in animal spirits. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay. There we go. There we go. Have any of them given you inspiration for any novels? <laughs> sure. Sure. They have. Yeah. I, um, I've had lots of animals throughout my life. Um, I had a little dog that got hit by a car when I was younger oh. and, um, yeah, I was really little when it happened. I was devastated and, um, I thought for sure in the morning because our my parents had taken him away while we were asleep. Um, but in the morning when I woke up and I lived in Jasper, I thought for sure that the angels had taken him away. I saw little paw prints on the hood of our vehicle and I thought from there and then up onto the roof and I thought the angels took him away. It was actually a cat. <laughs> But I didn't know that when I was that little. I thought the angels had come and took him away. <laughs> yeah, so they, yeah, he's ended up in my stories a few times. You will never find a story of mine that does not have an animal or some type of critter in it. Ah, uh, there we go, the critter kingdom. There we go, that's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, indeed. So, my goodness, so this love of critters, and I believe your parents were a lovers of outdoors, so do you believe that had an effect on you today and the way you create all these wonderful stories? Yeah, I'm pretty outdoorsy, so I um, go camping a lot. Um, my cats come with us when we go camping, so they're never on a leash. Uh, we don't camp where there's other people around us. They love to, they'll go hiking with us for kilometers. The cats will just follow us along. Um, they never run away. They'll always come, they always come back to us. So they love camping very much. So they like to go camping. And then of course my, my dog also loves camping. And I'm a fan of swimming. I love to swim in the cold water. Lots of people, well, people that come camping with me do not go <laughs> in the cold water with me. However, it does not bother me in the slightest, so you'll always find me in the really, really cold water if there's some to be found, and we usually camp by that, yeah. Yeah, so I dream about mountains, I write about mountains. Um, that's why my gold fever book was kind of near and dear to my heart, because it takes place in the Yukon, and the hardships that are, hard, hard times that are around and hardships that people had to go through way back when in the Yukon in their quest for gold. Uh, some Yukon gold swag indeed. That's what I'm talking about indeed. So since this podcast is all about inspiration, I'm sure there's some gold that you can share with other folks looking to embrace their creative side and publish their first book. So what helped you to get the confidence to publish your first novel ever to the public? It, it was tough. I, I've always had friends who are communication, in communication, that write for a living. So it was, it was tough for me. But once I ended up with this finished product in my hands, and it was a book, and I went, well, now what do I do with it? So I thought, well, I'll start, maybe somebody will want to read it. And so I did. I actually sold my, my first book to um, a publisher for sure and um, I sold it to a couple publishers throughout my time actually and then in the end I self-published it so it, it's been a it's been a journey for sure of uh, trying to get enough nerve to put yourself out there uh, there you go there you go
But yeah, that's what I'm talking about indeed. So with all that wonderful creativity and able to publish one book multiple times with multiple publishers and eventually self-publish it on your own. So do you ever fear the blinking cursor at all? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes, you know, um, I'm, a, I'm what they call a pantser. I don't know if you know what a pantser is, but I do. I write kind of by the seat of my pants and go with what I hits me at the moment for my story. I do a little bit of plotting, but not a whole bunch. I do just kind of write what I want to write when it hits me. Uh, but yeah, every now and again, a blank screen stares at me and I go, oh. So then sometimes I'll write by hand. So I get my pen out and my book and I start writing by hand. And that sometimes can snap me out of it. Ah, uh, there we go. There we go. Indeed, there we go. That's right. So my goodness. So that's freaking amazing that even though, of course, the blinking cursor kind of scares people, but at the same time, it's like, hey, I can still publish this work, put it out there for folks to read. So with all this amassed creativity to pages, what's next for Lon? Are you going to explore any other genres outside of romance? Um, I wrote a suspense and the suspense, I find I like them because I like to read them. And I also, I, I did write one called Forget Me Not. And I do like those. They, in my mind, they take a little bit more planning for the pants for me. The things have to be plotted out a little bit more carefully in those types of books. But yeah, I'll probably write one of those. But the current book I'm writing right now is actually a fantasy with uh, some time travel in it. So yeah. Oh, so it's going to be some steampunk time travel or a different era? Or is that G14 classified? <laughs> <laughs> no, not classified at all. It's more um, kind of more on the medieval side of things more so, um, but not steampunk. I haven't gone down that path actually with steampunk. So um, I'd like to, and I love the costumes that the steampunk people wear. I think they're fabulous, definitely. So, but I haven't. I haven't gone down that steampunk road yet. I don't know that I will. Uh, okay. Just a little curious. Just a little curious because it's like, oh, yay, this is my wheelhouse. It's like, oh, maybe I should get out of my comfort zone a bit eventually. Probably explore another genre. Maybe do a billionaire urban vampire romance. <laughs> well, they're out there. Have you read any steampunk novels? Nah, not really. I'm more of a nonfiction guy, more the tactical oh. guy, more of nonfiction. I rarely read some fiction, but hey, I'll, I'm always open to giving a book a shot uh, since I'm a bookie, wookie, as I sometimes call myself. <laughs> well, maybe you should try to read a romance novel. Now, I did read the first chapter of a romance novel from a guest last year. It was um pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll just save it at that. <laughs> Contemporary romance? Yeah, it was contemporary, too. Yeah, I, there definitely some uh, contemporary uh, romance. There was some Mile High Club action. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of action in romance novels in one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like cashews and almonds turn into a different kind of nut afterwards. Exactly. <laughs> so it's okay to be crazy then. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Almost like crazy in love since it's romance, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be a little bit crazy to write about it. Oh, pish all. I'll just call it creativity. That's right, the crazy creative. creative. Crazy creativity, yeah. Sweet. So since this is far from your first interview, is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often when you're on these wonderful podcasts? Um, well, I always try to share about how, how I like my milk and my cookies and that that really somehow does something to my, my brain when I go to sleep and unlocks my creativity for for those types of things, but um, 
No, I, I don't know. I, I wish that, um, I always feel like romance maybe is a little bit harder for people to read or that they don't maybe think that it's worthy enough to read because it's romance, but it, it's a book and it has, they have just as many hard parts in there to write as any other book does. So I wish that um, people would give romance more of a try. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Romance is extremely popular. Like the romance genre itself and all the subgenres of it skyrocketed ebook readers like crazy a few years ago. Cause it's like, oh, yay. I want to get those dirty looks from people out to buy the little red and the red and white Harley of romance books in public anymore. I can just download them all to my Kindle or my iPhone or whatever. Yeah. For sure. People don't maybe ask what my favorite book is. Or who my favorite author is. Oh, yeah. Christine Fian's one of them, right? If I pronounced the last yeah, name right. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah, she is for sure. Um, Nora Roberts is probably my favorite author. Um, she writes a lot of a lot of everything. So I do love her a lot. She's also a panther. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how a lot of authors who write fiction or pantsers it's like it's it's really interesting to me when and that jd rob especially i think nora rob is a pen name of hers if i'm not mistaken if unless if i'm not uh, it too. She, rob she writes under another uh, pseudonym there we go the pseudonym that's the uh, one i was looking for yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. and she has like an yeah. a through z it's like so and so in death or whatever i'm like wow all right, like all this in death, like is there going to be a podcast in death in the near future from her? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know, but she's extremely popular, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right. Popcorn popular. They both pop. Very popular, yeah. Ah, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. So my goodness. So a fun question. Have you ever heard of the author Mercer Mayer? Yeah. Ah, uh, were you ever a fan of the Little Critter series growing up as a little one? Um, no, not so much, really. No, um, but you know, when I was younger, I, I loved all the old stuff, really. And cartoons were my favorite. Looney Tunes was the best. Still is, if you ask me. <laughs> my favorite book growing up was Cl Clifford the Big Red Dog. <laughs> yeah, Clifford the Big Red Dog and uh, Looney Tunes. Hmm, maybe there's something in that title with how I write today. Ah, uh, <laughs> there we go. It might be a guy dressed up in a bunny suit meeting a lady dressed up as a big red dog, maybe. Perhaps. Or the Wily e. Coyote. Ah, uh, there we go. That could be a third party. It could be Three's Company. <laughs> <laughs> Where they all find out they're all vampires. <laughs> Add some more characters to the romance. Make it interesting. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You got to create a bad day. Shit will happen. That's right. And then they can all be Highlanders for part two. Exactly. Time travel. Oh, there we Big go. Big Pink Bunny Rabbit. Ah, oh, there we go, the pink bunny rabbits. It'll be, yeah, it'll big, be good for Easter. Big pink bunny rabbits and the wily coyote. Ah, uh, there we go. Heck, maybe even make the carrots pink. <laughs> <laughs> then we might as well add big sheep dogs. Ah, uh, there we go. Sheep dog swag indeed. <laughs> and some sheep. Sure. Ah, uh, there we go. See how the stories can grow? There we go. That's right. It's like a forest of novels waiting to appear. <laughs> <laughs> Especially paperback novels. <laughs> Do you like paperback novels? Uh, paperback, hardback, yeah. I mean, it all comes from the forest, right? I mean, you know. It does. Yeah. What's your favorite type? Do you like e-readers? Do you like reading on your iPhone? Do you like reading 
hardcover, um, real books in your hand. Oh, I'm tactile. Real books in my hand from the reading experience. However, I became more of an e-reader in the coming years, especially with COVID going on. <laughs> yeah, that because um, it's like more screen time with virtual work. It's like, oh, wow, I guess um, might as well sneak in some extra reading here on the screen. Got all these e-books on my Kindle account I haven't read yet from all those 99 cent specials. So I was like, oh, might as well read some of these. <laughs> pick one, pick one. Yeah, I like, I like the, I think you put it a good way. I do like the feel of the real books in my hands when I'm reading, but um, the e-readers are so convenient. On holidays, sure, because you can take it with you anywhere. You have as many books as you want downloaded to read. Yeah. However, holidays, well, that hasn't happened for over a year. So, uh, <laughs> except for <laughs> camping. Camping is good because there's no people where we go camping, so it's all fun. Uh, do you feel like your creativity soars when you camp as well? Yeah, for sure. It's, it's pretty empowering to be able to go, you know, camping where we do, and you've got the big, giant, beautiful mountain covered with snow right now, but they're pretty empowering, for sure, and the trees, and seeing the odd grizzly bear every now and again and seeing all the wildlife, the deer, the, there's, there's just so much to see and it's very, yeah, I find empowering because it does, it spurs me on to write. Ah, that's what I'm talking about indeed. That's right, nature's cocaine known as snow. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a lot of that today. <laughs> Here. <laughs> so much so my boss chased me home so I worked full time as well and the roads were really bad so I had to come home full time today because the highways were really bad so ah uh, that's right definitely got to stay home indeed so any tips for the full time employee who does this on the side as a creative writer to stay productive yeah, I, my day starts at five in the morning, which is an unholy time of the day, five in the morning. But that is pretty much the time that I, I have. So I write from five till for about an hour and a half um, before I have to get ready and eat some breakfast and then get on the highway to go to work. Um, then afterwards, I come home and Sometimes I'll have enough energy to do some writing and book stuff while I'm at home in the evening. The weekends are usually where I have more of a chance to do that because I have some unlimited time. Uh, okay, there we go. A weekend warrior who has a miracle morning, 5 a.m. every day. There we go. That's a awesome. weekend warrior. I like that. Yeah, that's right. The W and the W. That's right. Well, you know what? Let's go for three W's. The Weekend Warrior Woman. There we go. Weekend Warrior Woman. Awesome. You should put that in one of my books. Ah, uh, there you go. That's right. <laughs> there you go. That that heck, that could probably be like a contemporary romance for you. <laughs> or a fantasy. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Warrior Oh, yeah. Almost like some Amazon swag. All righty. Yeah, yeah. Weekend Warrior Woman. Yeah. Uh, there we go. The Weekend Warrior Wonder Woman. That's right. She makes yeah, you wonder, too. Yeah, some bracelets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all righty. I like where this is going. All righty. That's what I'm <laughs> talking about. That's right. Some Warrior Woman swag, some Xena swag, a whole tribe of Amazon swag. Yeah, I like that a lot. There yeah. you go. Warrior women. That's right. Maybe even some Greek goddess swag on top of it. Why not? Yeah, you can do anything you want. That's right. I'm That's gonna like... have to remember that though. The weekend warrior women. Ah, uh, there you go. It'll be like whipped cream with cherries on top. Exactly. Ah, uh, 
Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive, and that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again, but this time in the year of 2021, what advice would you give to yourself? Keep calm. Always be kind. And be happy every day. That's my, my philosophy. As long as you're back, it's all good. And continue to eat milk and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> At this rate, that might be the title of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> the milk and cookies. <laughs> Like, yeah, episode 345, milk and cookies. Like, wait, what? <laughs> and that's exactly what you're gonna get that what? <laughs> <laughs> like Law to Mackie, like, okay, all righty. Oh, romance. Oh, oh, there goes. <laughs> like, uh, I'm not sure if I caught all of the milk and all the cookies in this one, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone needs to try it. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason why Santa Claus likes milk and cookies. <laughs> oh yeah, especially when he's in Colorado after they legalized weed. Those are the best cookies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Terribly chocolate for me, but you know, <laughs> has to be chocolate. <laughs> Oh yeah, there, there's chocolate in there too. It, it, it covers the other stuff, you know. <laughs> so that way Santa goes back with the reindeer and he's like, oh crap, I forgot to deliver the presents. At a certain type of cookie, it was it had a green interior. And then out of nowhere, I thought <laughs> I was king of the reindeer. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't share with the reindeer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially that red nosed one. It gets enough attention. Yeah, don't do that. You can stick the carrots or whatever. Yeah, exactly. When they be like, What's up, Doc? You'd be like, No, that's physician to you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Keep your boobs off my cookie. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, for those who want to put their metaphorical hooves on your cookies known as your wonderful books. What's the best way for folks to reach out to you and keep up with all that you're doing? I'm on every social media platform. So you can find me at Lana Mackey author on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. All my books are for sale on my website direct from me and they're cheaper there than they are on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or Google, um, Apple. <laughs> yeah. Head to my website. You'll find me. Woohoo! Well, there you have it, folks. For those who want to get on their romantic reading tip, head over to Lana's website. It'll be in the show notes, indeed. We'll definitely send you directly to the About Her page in case a minor <laughs> fan <laughs> clicks on the link and then they realize, oh, all right, this is not my cup of tea. Let me go to the direct page and get some of this magical goodness. Definitely pick it up. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with your cats and your sheep dogs. That's right, folks. That's right, indeed. That's right, indeed. So any parting words for the folks still listening and made it to the end before we close it out? Thank you for having me. And thank you to anybody of the readers that are out there following me. I appreciate it. I wouldn't write without you. It's what keeps me going is my readers. Send me your comments and your reviews because I love them. Again, that's what will help me keep writing. I live for that. And yeah, thank you for having me. How's it going, my friend? I'm glad you made it to the end. That shows that you really enjoyed what you heard and you are an uncommon finisher. Thanks for giving this show a listen. If you really want to help out the show, be sure to subscribe, leave a review, and share this with someone that you care about or someone that needs to hear this message because you want to spread this podcast around like butter on bread if that's your type of thing and if it's not your type of thing still spread it around anyway because good stuff needs to be shared with good people like yourself <laughs>